19th day of February, it's Sunday evening in my neck of the wood at 7 p.m. or just a few minutes past 7 p.m. and it's time to connect. All right, great, great, great to have everyone joining us from wherever it is there. Joining us. Do me a favor, tell me where in the world you're connecting with me from. Uh, tell me what platform you're also connecting. I see activity on Facebook, I see some activity on YouTube as well. Uh, we are waiting activity on LinkedIn. Uh, do send me a message right now and tell me where you're joining me from. Tell me how it is going on, how it is out there. And as I always will ask, one word to describe your day. The word that best describes your day. One word that best describes your day. Go ahead. Over the next two minutes, let's have that. As many of us as possible that are here, share with me where you're joining me from. Share with me one word that best describes your day. All right? I'm having an amazing time. I'm super pumped up and super excited. Super excited to be here. And Yagno Isaac, it's great to have you join me. Hey, great man. Long time, my brother, as well. I trust that you're doing well and you're doing amazingly well. All right, guys, it's the second, I believe it's the second Sunday in the month of, um, yeah, it is. I believe so. Um, uh, running in the series, the Thrive series that we're having. So as I said that, first of all, we'll be having four different sessions in every series. So the first one will be in the area of business. The second is in the area of relationship. The third is in the area of personal development. And the fourth has to do with the spiritual and the soul. I take it over again. The first has to do with business. So we're, so we're in the Thrive series. And first of all, we do, we, last week we looked at Thrive, the business way with Dr. Triple A, and it was phenomenal. It was amazing. I watched the episode last night and I was truly blessed myself. I, I mean, no jokes. And for those of you that were here, you can attest to how amazing and awesome it was. Uh, um, after business, this week we're having a session on relationships. Like I said on WhatsApp, the talk here plenty. <laughs> I know if you shout, the talk here plenty. And then next week, we'll be having a session with my good brother, the still dapper, Shewu um, Onamusi. All right, Shewu David Onamusi on personal development. And at the last uh, Sunday of the month, we'll be having a session on the spiritual and the soul. Paul Uda, Paul Uda of leadership, the great Paul. All right, Ekimini Joseph, it's great to have you here. It's great to have you here. Great to see so many people, so many people joining us today on the different platforms. Instagram, all right, I'm seeing, um, yeah, sorry, sorry, not Instagram, I'm seeing activity on YouTube. To all those on YouTube, uh, thank you for joining us. It's amazing to have you here as well. Amazing, super amazing to have you here. It's going to be a super episode, and I'm getting to it in a bit. All right, so one of the things that I said, as I said earlier, is that today we're going to be speaking on relationships, and I have a super, super, super guest, all right? So I need you right now, before I bring in my guest, I want you to quickly do me a favor, everybody. Go ahead and share the link to this video on your page. Uh, put it in your WhatsApp groups. There's many platforms that you can get to right now, right now right now all right as many platforms as you can get to let people come and join we're gonna have a powerful session powerful session and as you always know if you follow the connect absolutely unscripted absolutely unscripted very little prior conversations as regards how the conversation should go it is 100 
um, free flow, 100% authentic, 100% impactful, and 100% feel good. All right. And that's the way that the vision that I had concerning this three years ago, and that's how we've done this Sunday in, Sunday out. All right. Sunday in, Sunday out. So I'm, this week, we're going to be speaking on relationship and I'm bringing my amazing, amazing guests um, into the studio. Amazing guests. Let me give you a bit of a profile. All right. So the, my guest today is called Jenny Chisholm. All right, and uh, 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 her government's name is Chisum Utibe Aka. I've known Jenny for, for quite a while, for a long time, way back in Abuja, House on the Rock, The Refuge. Uh, we've done a couple of things. I mean, I think she was on AU Connect, uh, changing the narrative or transforming the narrative um, episode, um, an event I held, a small event I held in Abuja. I think it was in 2018, Jenny. <laughs> she's in the waiting room, so when she comes in, she'll correct me. I think either 2017 or 2018. Um, and She's a phenomenal thought lead on, the, on different areas. All right, so Ch Jenny Chisholm is a Nigerian entrepreneur with business focus on media and content production, publishing and training. She's also a certified, wait for this, guys. She's a certified fear mastery therapist. For all of our way, they're always fear. Mm -hmm. Somebody is here to help you deal with it, have mastery over it. All right, the journey to mastery. Aha, uh -huh. and coach with a deep passion for helping women don't feel excluded. But she has a calling to help men because you know, say men, we we women we, we, we get wahala, <laughs> we get wahala, <laughs> and our wahala is hardly ever as discussed as the wahala of the women folk, and women folk have wahala. But the men have this peculiar kind of wala that is largely and has been largely unaddressed. All right. Uh, for helping men find a balance in life and to be equipped uh, to build strong, grounded families as husbands and fathers. Um, her work revolves around online business, uh, men empowerment men empowerment relationship dating and marriage Woo! uh chisholm is the author of several books blogs and thoughts uh and a show host on three youtube channels i don't know how she does that i have one youtube channel i'm struggling to even get a team to run it she's doing three youtube channels okay and for she's done this for almost two decades ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna run to the um waiting room right now and uh, check to see if Jenny is ready for us. Okay, so uh, Jenny will be joining us very soon and all of it. But then again, we're talking relationship today. We're talking relationships today. As soon as I have Jenny ready in the waiting room, I'll be bringing her in uh, right away so we can get the conversation going. So like I said, I need you guys to go and share. I need you to go and uh, you know share this mm -hmm. video share this video right now, share this live stream right now, go uh, tell as many people as you can about it. A, com a really serious conversation is about to happen over the next 50 minutes or dear about. Hopefully we'll be able to tie this in at the top of the hour, uh, depending as it be hot, all right? Uh, my pigeon is getting better, isn't it? Depending as it be hot. Okay now, so, 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 uh, Jenny, we're still waiting for visuals. We have her in the waiting room. Um, however, um, a bit, I think there's a bit of challenge with her visuals and we want to be sure that, um, you know, want to be sure that all is set so that once we bring her in, we'll be able to run, uh, we'll be able to run. So we're doing the checks right now, I think there's a bit of challenge. Right? Um, we're doing the checks right now and we'll be able to bring it in. So Jenny, if you're ready for me, I can see you in the waiting room, uh, but I think that we need to walk a bit of your visuals so that you're ready. Um, to come in and have a conversation with us. But now to the people out there uh, on Facebook, on uh, LinkedIn, and on YouTube, uh, I want you to, to um, right now, I want to know who is reaching us from YouTube. If you're from YouTube, please send the message. Let me know those are reaching us from YouTube. I can see the people reaching us from LinkedIn. I can see, oh, sorry, from Facebook. Um, I can see the people reaching us from LinkedIn as well. All right. Okay, so we're going to get started now. And I am waiting to have Jenny's visual sorted out so we could bring it in. We're talking about relationships. So let me just put, let me just put, 
let me just leave an opener or put down an opener before Jenny comes in. I've always maintained, and I say this at every opportunity that I'm availed to be able to speak, that one of the greatest resources, and if you ask me in my own very humble opinion, the greatest resource that God has ever given to mankind, to humanity, is relationship, whether it's vertical or horizontal, uh, because relationships serve as the vehicle by which you are able to fulfill purpose. And if you understand what your assignment is on earth, then you understand that the instrumentality of relationship is pivotal to how well you're able to execute that assignment. And the execution and the way the methodology by which you execute it uh, will determine the outcome or the quality of the results of your assignment. And if relationships, like I said, form stand as uh, very important platforms or channels by which that execution can occur, like every resource, it means that you must be able to manage the relationships in your life, identify them, sort them out, grade them, uh, 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 work them, invest in them, manage them like every other resource to get the best out of them. And the best out of them could be twofold. It could either be that you realize soon enough and quick enough that some relationships are for a season and that some relationships are also to be able to, um, you know, take you to, to, to work, to work in certain, to work in certain um, areas. All right. Or to work in certain areas. Um, okay, so I just got a message from Jenny now. She's trying to switch devices. So as soon as she's done with that, we'll bring her into the studio, all right? So let's all just be patient. So back to what I was saying. Um, so if you understand how important relationships are, then you will prioritize relationships and learn to grade them and sort them and to give them the, not, um, um, the required attention. Now, we're talking about the series, the theme for the series that we're running for the month of February is thrive and thrive goes beyond managing it goes beyond enduring it goes beyond surviving thrive means that you're getting the optimal outcome uh from anything that you're in so if you want your business to thrive then there's certain things that you must do for your business to thrive if you want your spiritual work to thrive then there's certain things that you must do for your spiritual work to thrive if you want your personal development to grow in great leaps and bounds so you can have exponential outcomes and exponential results and thrive then there's certain things that you must do, all right, to be able to thrive. In the same way, if you want the relationships in your life to thrive, you know, there are many things that you can do. I was listening to someone today, very profound, just a few minutes before I came live, uh, someone that I follow very closely, Shay Banigbe, and she was saying that, look, she's run many businesses, she's a serial entrepreneur, she's written many books, she's done many things, like many of you out there, Nebet Francis, and a lot of um, awesome people out there running many businesses and all of that. And you will realize that one of the things that has been instrumental to your success has been help. Help being marvelously helped being marvelously helped is also a function of the quality of relationships that you have i stand as a beneficiary of help whatever great exploits i've ever had in my career in my life in my personal space has come out of uh, the quality of relationships that i've had and that i have and that i will have and it's so it's important for us guys ladies and gentlemen it's 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 absolutely important for us to be able to give all the necessary attention to the kinds of the kinds of relationships that we have in our life. And this for me serves as an opening to the conversation that I'll be having with Jenny today, because look, we're not just talking about relationships in isolation. We're talking about the relationships you have right now. We're extraining them. We're looking at the common challenges with relationships and why some relationships don't deliver to you. And in many regards, I say to people that, look, is it a function of those relationships not having the capacity to deliver certain outcomes to you? Or is it a function of you having an over expectation of those relationships? Is there something wrong with our configuration of our understanding of what a relationship should be? Or is there something wrong with the relationships that we get into? Is there a problem with a relationship or is the problem with our understanding 
of the relationship. If I had a better understanding of the nature of the relationship I have with you or that I should be having with you, uh, will it help me to be able to function better in that relationship? Or is it a function of, look, I'm simply here, whatever it is that I see in that relationship without jumping the gun or without even, you know, putting Jenny in a certain line of um, of, of her thoughts. Um, you know, just, just thoughts that things that, that we're going to have conversations around. So I'm looking forward to her being ready. I'm doing a check on her right now uh, to be sure that I'm doing a check on her right now to be sure that she's good to go. And um, as soon as we have that confirmation, we'll have her right here in the, in, um, in, in, um, the studio. So yes, relationship relationship and like i said earlier greatest resource all right greatest resource that hey prince david great to have you here my brother as always great to always have you here so greatest resource that god gave to humanity any resource that isn't properly managed will not deliver optimal output and so it means that relationship have a purpose really all relationships have a purpose now, I remember I did a write-up on, on my blog, anecomdesora.wordpress.com, many years ago. I think it was about six years ago, five years ago. And I said in that write-up that every relationship must deliver value to you. Somebody got on me immediately. I said, no, 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 no. Hey, you don't say that. I mean, you make it sound like uh, hey, if it's a relationship, it's not good for you. Then, And, and I said, but the truth of the matter is Every relationship must deliver value to you, whether you like it or not. Whether, and it does not mean, deliver value does not mean that you are receiving constantly from that relationship. Yes, the truth of the matter is that every relationship must serve you something as well as you must serve something to that relationship. Woo! And now we can take the conversation and blow it up from here because there are many ways that we could go you know, in this line of conversation, even whilst, whilst I'm waiting for my guest. And I said to myself, when that person sent me that message, wrote me a very long letter, very passionately, explaining why no one, she doesn't feel that what she, yep, doesn't feel that what I said was quite right. It didn't quite sit right with her. And she said that, look, listen, I, I, I don't, I, I think when you put it like that, then it will sound as if, ah, you must, you're only in a relationship because of what you can get. And I'm saying to myself right now, I'm saying to myself that, yes, I'm in a relationship because that relationship must deliver something to me. And, and many times it's not even just about what you get out of the relationship. Many times what it delivers to you is what it allows you or enables you to be able to do in that relationship. How well does a relationship help you grow? What does a relationship do for your peace of mind? What does it do for the quality of your thoughts? What does it do for the broadening of your horizon? What does it teach you? What does it benefit you? What does it deliver to you? What does it open you up to? Because, listen, at, at, at a certain point in your life, you have to be able to ask yourself questions uh, and, and learn to x-ray, and learn to x-ray uh, really every relationship that you have. And I believe, I believe that I have my guest in the house right now. And so I'm going, I'm going to bring it up right now. And um, ladies and gentlemen, if you have your virtual hands out there, and you do go ahead and just put them together as I bring into the studio, Jenny Chisholm. Hey, Jenny, it's great to have you here. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> Fine. AU International. Good evening. <laughs> AU International. Well Jenny done. Of, Jenny of life. Jenny special. Jenny Magnificent. It's great, it's, it's, it's great to have you here. I was reading your profile uh, earlier on. And I, what I was saying to myself <laughs> as, as I was reading your profile was, ah, I want to focus on that main part. We will come to the part about content and all of that because I think I think you and I even need to discuss that. <laughs> yeah, 
But but yeah. first of all, let let me start with this. Let me start with this. What okay? What, before we get into and you can probably start with just telling us a bit about your journey and all of that, and maybe the question will serve you. We'll bring you there. But okay. what really brought you to that point of focusing on men? I mean, as in I, I, with like men, what men, how men will find balance? <laughs> and see, are you a man? Uh, <laughs> Go ahead and talk to me, Jeff. No, I don't need to be. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, um, Anikam, for this out thing. Like, I can't believe I'm finally in the connect. Like, ah, ah, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. So um, on that question, uh, um, first of all, so let me say thank you to everyone watching. Good evening. I'm streaming live from Uyo in Nigeria. And I'm super excited. Yes, I'm a men coach, and I'm proudly so because um, there is not there is no better fulfillment than doing something that you know that is really you. Okay, and I started the men conversation, or what I call the men conversation, in 2012. You know, it was um, a BlackBerry Messenger kind of group at the time. Then it grew into um you know serious life events like where we actually you know we rent halls have actual physical events that we are packed and you know sold out each time because i was so passionate and i am still passionate about having men have um what i call no judgment zones where they can just be themselves like human beings that they are first before we are male and female i usually see on my youtube channel we are first of all humans before we are male or female right mm. so mm. but i think that i think that the male gender are uh, is that gender that find that always have to operate in their masculine gender if you know what i mean you, that you guys have to be on your guard you know you have to show walking you have to be accepted you have to show walking to be accepted you know or like you know us women and so many other things that are you know not fair in that sense i mean there are things that are not fair both ways i mean this humanity but one of the things that really 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 touched at my core that made me say no i'm going to step out and at that time i was single you know so added to the fact that i was a woman i was single some people would ask me like excuse me i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> you know the reason was that you know i was um tired of just seeing people barely living just because they got into a relationship especially got into a marriage you so many people are okay at the point that they are young adults that are single thriving immediately they get married it becomes a roller coaster you know of issues you know most of the time of course not everybody can be but yeah. that and that's not to say that they were better pe uh, maybe they were better people single and then marriage complicated them no marriage just has a way of you know blowing out you know out of proportion sometimes who we are or the essence of our humanity and then you know we have the spiral down of what we have in society where marriages are barely barely surviving most of them so i just felt well if we're going to fix the problem usually you know me i'm a strategist so and you know we should look at the source you know instead of treating the symptoms and again a bit of a background as well at that time in 2012 um, between 2012 and 2016, I was huge. I mean, I, I was a huge um, social media influencer in Abuja, and I had these circles all over. Every week, I was always in and out doing something for the UN, and the conversations were always, you know, empowering men and um, women and children. And if even when men come into the picture, it is like let's get men to support us, and I'm like something is not quite happening, you know. Mm -hmm. And again, right. you. Yeah, then you see a lot, even when in the women intervention, so let's say, for instance, a woman is battered, is abused at home, is beaten, okay, she comes to these, you know, forums and they embrace her and tell her, leave him, do this, do that, you know, and then after a while, the woman goes back to the man that everybody's saying is the devil, you know, and then what is one result? The interventions were not producing the results that, you know, have been issued, the, the funders were expecting. And, and I think, I thought it was a bit hypocritical because think about it. How do you, for instance, let, let me give this example. You know, a group of people, an organization heavily funded, entered a region in Nigeria and then, you know, co-opted um, co young people, young women, 
you know, who, you know, most of them are single, most of them are also married, and then, you know, got them to empower them in that sense. And then afterwards, expect them to go back home to their husbands or their fathers and then do what with the empowerment. Go and teach the men and say, this, this is how we want to be treated. You know, for instance, especially for the married ones. And it just wasn't telling. And I said, something has to be done. Why, are we, why do we avoid bringing solution to men? Why do we believe, even before we try, that they, they are not just interested? Or they are, mm. they, are, they are that gender that, you know, that don't know how God made them. Just allow them. They are here to, to deal with us. And that narrative, I've seen it, you know, um, demotivate a lot, a, lot, a lot of young women, make them a little bit fierce. So a, a, every man is somewhat of a devil, you know. Mm. And then I've seen it also affect boys. So you see boys asking questions like, oh, in our school, they keep doing these things for girls. When would they do for boys? And I see the mm -hmm. damage and I see what's uh, happening, you know, and I'm like, no, no. Even if I was going to be a lone voice, I was going to do this, you know. So I started out, I started by, you know, creating forums where they will share and then, you know, I'll, I'll facilitate and give advice and, you know, and then it was so profitable, but you won't, be, you won't believe it. After 2012, in 2013, I closed down the group out of, you know, my just feeling like, where is this going to go to? And they were begging me, Jen, you know, we, are, we, we had 49 men in the group. And all I did was, you know, if, if there are issues, they would share within themselves. And then, you know, everybody would just say, no, I think this is the right thing to do. Don't do this. You know, so I wanted to, you know, understand how men also think. And of course, I wasn't disappointed because men were integrally human beings. So why do we make it look like they think differently? And, you know, we saw those things happen over and over again. And I said, okay, so maybe we should have, life events but i dropped the ball at first because i felt let's leave this thing but it kept calling me it kept like i couldn't sleep for some years you know i'll go to church is there then what um of all i had the pastor come and preach in my church of course and you can you were there as well i guess um and he spoke about men the endangered species i can't forget that message in 2013 or thereabout and I lost it. I had to follow the pastor, you know, give him a call, email him to say, sir, this thing you're talking about is such a burden for me. And that was how I, it took me a while. I know I had to go for therapy myself because I had to go and unlearn, you know, all the things that were trying to make me not start or to feel like men would not listen to me. I had to go and learn them and so many other things. But by 2016, I went full blast, like, you know, I created the platform, the man, um, the man and himself, you know, and to my wildest surprise, I got a lot of sponsors, a lot of support, and, you know, I just went on from there. So, short, okay, so that's a long answer. The short answer is that I think that a lot of us think that men are not human, and that is not fair. Two, a lot of men need guides. Because of the way we are raised, sadly, we, are, we raise our boys, even as I'm a parent now, I'm very conscious of it, we raise our boys a bit differently from the way we raise our girls. And that has seen the family unit a little bit, I mean, you don't put a responsibility on somebody just because you feel he should be able to do this. What about you know, making sure that he's able to do that and judge him by his, um, by his capacity. You know, so th those are the thoughts in my head, you know, when I started this. And that's why I run a full, um, you know, YouTube channel focused on men. And uh, I've had a couple of experiences over the years. Yeah, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm still on, on <laughs> online. Hello. Hello, Anikan. see hello hello are we still on please can anyone hear me okay Aneka, can you still hear Hello. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, go yes, ahead. Yes, I can hear go you. Ahead. I had a bit of, okay, so I had a bit of glitch. Uh, just go ahead. Okay, okay. I was wondering whether I was still here. All right. 
So I don't know the point where you left off or where anybody could um, hear me last, but is my audio clear? Your audio is perfect. Okay, great. So I was um, I was talking about how I came to be, you know, all the things I've had to do on the journey of um, taking on what I call my man to do, to do this. And when I started off in conversation, I didn't have group that I, I could look up to in Nigeria, apart from that pastor who spoke, you know, so I had to go get a certification in coaching, get a certification in therapy to be able to help um, men, because I found out some very shocking things that made me feel like, oh, why not? Why can't, why can't I be the one to help men? So, so I want to say the family unit grounded. I think that if we have better family systems, positive grounded yeah. families, we are going to have the next generation better. You know, we are going to have our nations better as well so that's actually what drives me in the whole men thing and um then i wrote a book in 2013 2018 the men code movement and that also changed um my men community i changed the name to the men code movement and um yeah i have one of my biggest fulfillments is that first of all let me state it's not easy to run a group for men See, it is not, it's not, it's not a, it is, in fact, it's one of the toughest things to do. It, it, I have a few people who, who looked at me then and were excited and said, yes, let's do this. And they started their own platforms. Today, they are not talking again. They are just like, yeah, babe, babe, that's tough, you know? And, well, 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 you know yeah. What, Jenny, hold on a second. Hold yeah. on, Jenny. What, what, so what exactly is the issue with men? You know, a couple of things. Um, even when I was out of the studio, I had to run to Facebook to hit just the listening so I could catch a bit of what you were saying. And a few things just came to mind, all right? I'm, I'm going to let you continue, but I just want to throw this in so you can also um, achieve this. First of all, okay. men are as diverse as, what, the number of bird species you have flying around in the sky. Exactly. And so how do you have a, and you're supposed to, re remember, this is supposed to provide solution. Yeah. And as a strategist, just like yourself, I'm thinking to myself, how do I have something that um, is coming from a source but has ubiquitous impact, but yet has to be served differently? How do we begin to even okay. categorize so we know how best to deliver? Because look, what's the, what's the point of anything that we're doing if, it's not, if it doesn't have impact? Every yeah. single thing I do has, is all about the impact. So yeah. how, do you, how do you even deal with the multivariate variedness how do you deal with the different types this guy is like this this one is like that that one is like that that one is like that that one i said what where do you even start from yeah you know, just take it off from there and then i'll chip okay. in uh, now and then go ahead jenny all right great very great very good question because it made me remember how i have you know tried to dovetail this thing so when I started out, like everybody, you know, the motivation is when you start, then you find direction. And if you're a great person, you can't stay in your room and be waiting for motivation. You have to start out, you know, towards what your, your heart is telling you. As you start out, then you start, you know, understanding and start narrowing down, you know, yeah. start going towards the master's and PhD of that course. So yeah, that's how it is. So I started out passionate. Like my, if you ask me, who do you want to reach? Every man, just come into the room, let's talk, you know, whatever it got, you know. But after a while, you know, after one or two events, I discovered that, you know, like you said, like women, we are, every human beings are complex. I mean, we are multifaceted. We are the reason that there is the world. You know, we bring the color. You know, we can't just all be the same. It will be boring, all right? So that's the way men are. Ah, everybody's different. So I now discovered that my core is the family. What breaks my heart the most is to see a man whose family or marriage now is crumbling and he's clueless about what to do. And I'm like... This is happening every time, you know, and, and I just said, okay, so I'm not after the career man, after the man who is, you know, let me focus on the man whose inkling is how do I be better when it comes to my love life? How do I become better to uh, share my emotions? Because there's no relationship and marriage without developing the emotional you which is where most men are babies. So a man is grown, but cannot, have not cried in the last 30 years, have not expressed himself vulnerably, have not even told his wife where he's pinching him because he, he is afraid of being judged. That man is a baby emotionally. So I just, okay, that's the man that I think that if I help, possibly, you know, his impact, you know, will escalate and make the family a happy place. Because I also find that a lot of homes are, you know, like silenced. 
you know, the mind are silent or they are either silent or they are, they are talking louder than everybody. So everybody is, you know, is working on eggshells. And I said, okay, so let me narrow this down to the man whose passion is, I want to build a great family. I want to be the family that, you know, that is, is um, open, is, you know, there we can feel safe. If you come home, you are safe. You're not bottled up outside and bottled up inside. In fact, so many people, including women, are bottled up at home and, you know, very, very relaxed when they are with strangers. So all of the things that caused those things became my immediate passion. So I narrowed it down from just talking to every man to focusing on single men, especially those who intend to get married or just got married. So that's where my focus is right now. If I can help more men and oh, fantastic. I have been so, so blessed to have a few people who have had to do one-on-one -on -one group coaching because I have a, a main platform on Facebook and um, also I do it full-time on YouTube. And I'm always so excited when one man tells me what you said here, what you said there, help my marriage, help my, you know, when I get those testimonials, it just keeps me moving. So I would say that, um, yeah, my call is to help men to understand, you know, that, see, in this life, first of all, you are enough. You don't need to particularly, um, you know, um, pass anybody's homework. Like, I don't have to explain it. Like, you don't have to put yourself through turmoil just to be accepted, just to be called a real man in that sense. Right. So, yeah. So I uh, deal with the emotion aspect, you know, it's like the fear part of, you know, um, what it takes to develop emotionally, to be able to love right, to be able to be, to understand oneself as authentic so that it's easy for you to pick the woman that matches your goal in life so that you don't go just pick any woman and then in marriage, the, the trouble is too much. You can't address anything. Then you escape. And all of those things. So that's what my, my my YouTube channel, you know, focuses on majorly. So most of the topics I deal on is to help that kind of man, right? Is can anybody still hear me? I can't see Anikan again. Hello, hello. If somebody tells me I I can hear me, so I can continue. Uh, I can hear, we can hear you. Okay. All right. Please, can somebody tell me whether you can still hear me? Hello? Okay. Someone said we can hear from, okay, good. Thank you so much. So that's the core of what I do. And I have a whole... <laughs> over 160 videos already in the last one and a half years thereabout um, focusing on men on YouTube on my channel Chisom Aka TV and man I can't wait for any man who thinks that you know what I'm saying you know even if, even women I, I mean I have over 40% of women there as well <laughs> who are so passionate about the fact that we need to have happier families like if we, if it's a happy family, then count me in, you know. And also, I think that what another thing I should highlight is the fact that I am also a living example of what you know I am doing. Now, from going to be somebody who you know, fine girl, fine girl, fine girl, you know. So I got my first uh, what they call that proposal, marriage proposal, when I was for just fourteen years old. <laughs> and in between fourteen years old and thirty nine years old, I got several. Um, wedding or rather marriage uh, like several will you marry me's will you marry me's so it became like this girl something is wrong I mean why are you not accepting men I remember even somebody very close to me tell me you want to marry Jesus <laughs> you know and that's because um, this thing I do now has been something that has been a burden to me even as a child From I remember from when I was nine when I had my first experience with you know who I would call a pedophile as a relative, I began to say that, oh, if men like this are, are this big and they can think like this, then something has to be done fast. And I grew up, you know, trying to see whether there's any forum that helps, 
you know, men as well. And I didn't find, so I think that's part of what pushed me to become, you know, to step out to do this. And um, yeah, so I got married when I was 39 years old, 11 months, like, so a month to my 40th birthday and not under duress, got married when I wanted to, because I found, you know, the kind of person I thought that, okay, first of all, I can live with. Secondly, you know, what I do, my passion and my drive, you know, is, you know, it just fits like a glove with what he, for, with who he is. And not everybody has that, um, what I call it, patience or foresight or ability to wait, you know, like I did. And that's how much sacrifice that I had to, I didn't know it was talking about at the time. I just knew that I, I was somebody who was already used to following my heart. So I knew that if I was going to finally do this marriage thing, it has to be, my heart has to be in it. It has to be, I have to be sure. You know, if people say, well, yeah, are you sure? Yeah, just get married, Joe, get married, you know, and I couldn't. So I know that there's something about my destiny with making sure that I help people, not just men. In the line of this work, I've had to help women as well and all that, but I make sure that I keep saying that men are my core. So I have had to narrow it down, you know, as you know, keep refining it as I go. So right now, my call is to the single man who, you know, who thinks that, oh, I want to build a family tomorrow or who just got married and would not mind to learn to, you know, you know, I'm here. That's what I do. <laughs> Hold on, Jenny. I had to, first of all, apologies to everybody. I had to switch devices. So today's probably the day for switching devices, right? I had to switch devices as well. But then I came in at the tail end. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now your call is to single men. Wait, I have a question for you, Jenny. What would you say in your engagement uh, with you know all the you know the plethora of people okay. engaged over the years? What would you say is the singular biggest challenge that every man that you've come across has? The singular. I know there are many challenges, though. So then do also. But the singular biggest challenge that every man has that has served as an impediment to him having a thriving relationship or as a hindrance to a thriving relationship. Okay, I would say, I would say fear. Okay, let me explain the fear in this way because they are, you know, the different people and their fears are also different. I would say for for the man who first proposed uh, marriage to me when I was 14, I felt is not just the fear, is the fear of, of, um, of settling. Let, let me put it like that. Like, you know, I'm back home because he actually came from the US to marry. So is that thing, that fear of settling, that, you know, I need to go pick a wife mentality. For me, I see it as a certain kind of fear. Then mm. secondly, you know, just looking at all the people, some will just meet you and say, let's get married. We were not friends. Let's get married. Let's just do this thing. I mean, you're the person. I just saw you and I know. And I'm like, it's not possible. It's either, you know, you don't understand what marriage is or you think it's, it's something you can learn on the go, which is also something I see all the time in marriages. So some men feel, we can figure this out. For me, it's a fear. Like, I want to get married. So marriage is something that adults do at a particular time. So this is the time, and I want to do it. With that preparation, no books read, no mentors, no idea of how who a woman is nothing, right? Fear of, of things like, in fact, one actually told me I'm afraid. But by the time I said, we have done this for one year. You know, we are Jesus babies. We can't be doing any harm. So it's either you're in or out. And he goes, I'm afraid. He actually said it. I'm afraid. So why the, the fear, why do people get into relationships when they are not ready for marriage? For me, it's another class of, you know, on, um, lack of self-awareness. It's also a fear. That's how I, can, I classify it. You know, you don't have any business. You know, have friends, go everywhere, meet everybody, be friends, hug, geez, learn from people. But for God's sake, this idea that you need to be in a relationship. In fact, some people are just 25 years old. They've been in a relationship since they were 11 to 25. Excuse me, how? For what? So they, they trap themselves into trying to be one person when they can actually explore, travel the world, learn from people. You know, so I, I feel like it is a fear that is sold from from socialization you know you wake up you say oh everybody's having a boyfriend everybody having a girlfriend so everybody's getting married at this age oh now that i have a job it's time to mar it's not it's a fear and i i see it i saw it in different aspects and i'm like no i i, I just can't do this i mean i'm not 
I, well, I used to say that time, you know, joking. I used to say, I'm not bold enough to do this marriage thing the way people are doing it. Just get in, you know, find girl, find boy, just let's do it. No, marriage is serious. And there is no, there is no co compulsory, um, this thing that said, oh, if you don't get married, you know, heaven will not accept you. In fact, heaven even said, sometimes to have your peace of mind, focus on God. Okay, so we, the wrong idea of what marriage is or what relationship or, you know, all of those things are fear that push that push people in different directions with, and they go and deal with people they don't have any business sometimes talking to, you know. Mm. And I have had to cancel lots and lots and lots of people. And most times, even for marriages that are broken down, I've had to interview people who have been divorced. I had a show in, 20, in 2011, a boot camp sort of, I had a few people who were divorced twice. So they are hoping to remarry for the third time. And I had somebody who had been divorced once and have remarried the same wife. And the conversation is sometimes when we are, when we say we are divorced, we're not doing it again. Sometimes it's ego. Other times it's lack of communication. Other times it's just childishness. Other times it's, it's the realization that, what was I thinking when I even hooked up with this person? So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, who, you know, I mean, and there are no, there are no stands that, uh, there are no standard as long as you're happy. That's how I tell people, as long as you're happy. Because I've seen marriages work with people that if they pass near you now, you look at them twice like, is, is, is that guy okay? Is that lady okay? But they are married and they're happy. Long. Yeah. So at the end of the day, so uh, why? And again, I grew up a Christian and I see a lot of Christians are sometimes the worst hit with this whole, you know, managing, managing a marriage, pretending, you know, especially when they are pastors. I've interviewed people, I've counseled people at, at, that, at that level, pastors, and you hear, you hear horrible things and you're like, how did this even get here? You know, how did we get here? So I would say it is that, you know, fear of people, people pleasing, it is lack of preparation. And again, culture, religion is, is, Oh my God, it's, it's crazy. You know, that thing about, oh, we, you know, Christians, basically Christian men have that, we can figure this out, you know, nothing, I mean, what's there? It's marriage now. So no preparation whatsoever. You don't even converse at the soulish level. You, have, you want to marry somebody. You can't tell what the person can do or can say in answer to a question, even if the person is not there. You're not ready. And you know, things don't take time. You know, take you know, time. it is a problem. You know, yeah. one of the things, one of the things I'm hearing from uh, what you're saying, right? And and I do agree with you, hundred percent. Is that uh, in many cases, and in most cases, and we're all students of life, and we're all going through life, yeah. and we're all in our story as we go through life, and and nobody yeah. has the story finished until the day that you lay, you know, your bread goes from you, and you go up to meet your father, hopefully, and so we're all just yeah. along. And one of the things I'm hearing is that many times understanding is lacking. Understanding yes. of what exactly this relationship, whether marriage or otherwise, is what it takes, what it entails, what yes. is what you're expected to, what your responsibilities are, and the yeah. capacity required of you, the varied competencies. Yeah required of you, your emotional availability, your your presence, exactly. your patient level and all of that. There's a whole lot there, right? And the many times, lot, yeah. I, in my opinion, um, I think people struggle from a lack of understanding. People have what I call peripheral yeah. understanding of situations. And now, you said exactly. something that I want to spend some time talking about. You talked about culture. I put up my WhatsApp status yeah. just a few days ago that culture will always eat strategy for breakfast. And it, it, it simply means that whatever mm -hmm. it is that internalize and you believe will determine what you can execute and largely the outcome of every relationship is based on the execution within that relationship and the execution okay. is based on the premise of your belief and so if yes. your belief system in itself is 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 strongly swayed in a particular direction by culture as in this is what this is how it should mm -hmm. be so you are coming to marriage from the point of mm -hmm. pressure, which is why for everything, I say, look, question the intent. And every time I'm speaking exactly. to either mentoring someone or working on a project with someone, the first thing I do for anything, look, I say to people many times, I say you're free to believe in anything. 
but be responsible enough to believe yeah. in what, what you know to be the right thing. All right? Exactly. So for, for anything it is that you are doing, for me, the first point of query, the first point of engagement is the intent. So what's your yeah. intent for getting married? Are you getting exactly. married? This is where we press play. And after we press play, marriage <laughs> should happen. Like you said, I've got it. <laughs> and so after I get the next thing that should be in the timeline of my life is a job, a wife, mm -hmm. children, and then we'll exactly. go to church on Sunday, and then we'll have rice Sunday afternoon, and then we'll and, grow and all even, together. And, and, and even that wife, all, all they needed is just somebody to cook for them and wash clothes. It's not really and, wife. So, exactly. Exactly. So, so, so to have a wife. many people, <laughs> Jenny, many people are sourcing for for um high level domestic stuff. Exactly. Unpaid ones. Yeah. Even if you are paid, <laughs> that's what you're looking for. The question is exactly. the person coming. Because you see, the reason why some some relationships work is the guy is looking for this kind of person. The person knows mm -hmm. that this is the person I'm looking for. Who and looking I'm, for? It will and work it, exactly. If you are in a and the idiot knows that idiot you're looking for, both of you will live together for 100 years. Let's let's exactly. understand that. Check it. And check it, it's working, it's everywhere, it's working. But you see, these ones unrealistic expectations. So she, he's thinking this, meanwhile, she's thinking this, he's thinking this and saying this, she's thinking this, but saying this, saying what he wants to hear, but meaning this, she's she's using him, he's using her. I don't understand. Because you know, there's now the place, Jenny. Jenny so there's now the place of there's now the place of. I don't even have a problem with the expectations you have. The question is, are you ready to do the work to meet up with that expectation? To meet up expectation, exactly. Every expectation has a responsibility. Exactly, exactly. You so and I don't know. change your mind halfway. You know, don't change your mind halfway. If you if you need to change your mind, the two of you two. Still need to decide that okay, so this thing is not working anymore. Let's advance to this level. It's because you're two now. If not, because I tell people being single is our default. To, that's how every all of us are born, and that's how all of us die. Single. That's our default. That's our immediate, our immediate response to things. We are selfish. We want to protect ourselves. So mm. marriage is something so much more higher than our usual. So you can't do it still trying to be single. Try still trying to no. You have to bring it up, you know, so grow together, do it together, discuss it together. It is something outside you. Don't even play um, smart or trying to be, oh, I can figure this. You can't. You know, and it's simple like that. It's simple that, oh, I don't feel like it anymore. Sometimes I just don't feel like being wife, this wife thing. You know, especially for me that I stayed single for 39 years, Anika. I'm already used to certain ways of doing, you know, you know, like I know how to do things and if i want to make money now, i know exactly what to do eh but so many times i want to be by myself but now i can't so Jennifer, so it has to be that knowing that see we don't have this thing no there's no school we didn't learn but carry if i if i if i tell my husband he understands he will even know when not to disturb this one or it did not the time you know just enter do the food by yourself do this thing by yourself. you understand but many people are not realistic so there's no communication. And people think communication is let's have meeting. Mm -mm. Communication includes the things you're not saying. Where you can say, I feel this way. These are my fears. These are the things I'm... I'm so many people are not at that level. And they say they are married. That your spouse cannot say, oh, I know exactly how my husband is feeling. I know exactly how my wife is feeling. And I can feel up the... I mean, see, beauty, mama, the beauty of marriage is only at that level. Any other thing, just remain single. I used to beg people now, remain single. Hold, hold on a second. I, you know, you are the guest, I'm the host. My own is just to throw something in the air that you need to answer and for you to answer. Okay, so just hold on a second. How can you know how your partner thinks when you don't even know your partner? Whoa, that's another good question. So, first of all, before you, you know, and you know what I tell people, do you even know yourself? Ah! You, so you many started. people don't know. No, no, Anika, I have had sessions where a man's marriage just broke. 
Oga, this is what madame is saying. That is the problem. And she, she can't take it anymore. She's leaving. What, at what point in the morning did you think this thing started breaking down to this level? He has mm. no clue. He can't even put it to words. So there is a, a, a disconnect. Yeah. From the, from, then the disconnect, there is a soulish disconnection. It is that same phenomenon that happens when, for instance, a woman gives her body in exchange for money. So she keeps her heart locked, locked away somewhere and just say, it's just an activity. Let me get it done and collect money. The same place where a man locks up his soul, some men lock up their hearts and feel like, I, let me just do this. It's just physical. I don't even need to know the girl's name. Just carry her one bam bam and go. So that they're already used to that disconnect. They can, you know, it's like a elevated. So you, you see, so you move your why, and why is bang bam? What is bang bam? Why? Areka, <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started. Don't don't get me started. So it is that same phenomenon that make people get into marriage. So they come in with. Their their body, the roles and and this thing, and they choose their own role without asking their partner. So they choose that in this house, how their eyes sweep. I am the man of the house. So this is how culture have told me to do it. I, I, I'm expecting her to do this. So at, there is no connection. At every point, you need to go back and forth, and most times that back and forth is tiring. You can't keep asking. So should I? Oh, did you mean? Did you say that? Oh, I thought you said. He becomes tired, and then he becomes a chore. He becomes bills, yes or no. He becomes ceremonial. And mm. then, so the, the, the people think, oh, they are together. They must be successful. In this mm. life that is short, in this life that is short like this, is what I will enter marriage to, be, to just be patching. What happened to being single and flexing? Ah, so, single and you know. Yeah, single people don't know the, the goal that they have. If anybody's normal, I mean, when we are young, when we are children, we are in a hurry to grow up. Now, they didn't tell us where that, that adulthood is, is, um, is like scam. It is the same no. way. When people are single, they want to marry, they want to marry. People who, want, who are married want to be single, they want to be single. How? Life uh, can be fun, though. Life can you know be what? really fun. Jamie, know you know yourself, what? There's, some, there's something you said. <laughs> which is very important it was something i was going to get to earlier and when i was speaking about culture and okay. I, I, I want to spend a bit of time and talk about that uh, you know how people come in and then they have this cultural imposed responsibilities roles and responsibilities yeah. so if you, yeah. you join jd your job description uh for exactly. yourself your home and so you come in and say as the as the man this is these are the things yeah. that i would and then she also says, yeah. as the woman, these are the things I will do. Then, will do then, it. we now have another list, which is the list yeah. of expectation of the That's things the that she will do. Of she yeah. will do. Then she has another list, which is the list of expectation of the things that you will do. So now, you're coming with that. You know, it always starts from a precept. So precept to concept. Concept to um, ideology. No, to philosophy. Philosophy to ideology. Ideology to analogy. Analogy to ideology. Ideology now results in action, habits, behavior, and all. Now, through that whole thing, you've come with your JD into the house. And so, instead of you coming in, getting to know each other. After all, it is you I said I wanted to marry. So we mm -hmm. are starting home and we will decide on how our, our home will mm -hmm. run. Based and this home has never existed. We are creating it afresh. Our shortcomings mm -hmm. and idiosyncrasies. Mm -hmm. So we can build our home, but rather we are coming in to say we want to build the home like my grandfather's home and then <laughs> And so when we come in there and we have my list of my JD, which is usually very kind to myself, and the expectation of this is how a wife should be. I wonder how you knew how a wife should be, having never been married before. And even if you married before, you never this person before. You come in and you say, This is how she should be. And so when she herself that she didn't take the time to know rather you wanted her to conform sorry transform sorry mutate <laughs> wanted her to be wondering mm -hmm. hey 
start with a way. What is this? You are not the <laughs> best. It's a problem here. You're not meeting up the standard. must scatter in this house. She wakes up one morning and she looks at the gold of expectation that she has and then she says ah, you're not like this and then all hell breaks loose because it comes in you get the vibe go apart mm -hmm. pay good money for counseling and the people that do the counseling make a whole lot of money and then guess what all things break down and i'm asking the question can please go back to mm -hmm. the beginning as it was in the beginning the question mm -hmm. is is it did you get married to so exactly. So are you just married to was supposed to help define and shape the home that both of you were supposed to build together. Exactly. So why? So I start from you know again, let me use myself as a case study because I understood me and me was developing and evolving every year. There's some people that I, I, I used to look back and say, what if I had taken the decision then? Wow, it would have been disastrous because I didn't know this, this, this at this level. So mm. first of all, you understand you. And I just wrote a book, Hello Lady. And, I, and what I was saying is, before you begin to ask a woman out, you know, because men are my major constituent, how do you even know the kind of lady to talk to? Is it everybody? She, she fine. She get calls. You not say hello, lady. Can I? It's, there's some people you don't have any business with, you know, in that intimate kind of relationship. So understand who you are first. Understand where you are going. The kind of, and when I say where you're going, it looks like motivational speaking. Just how do you picture your ideal life? They're not like ideal, you know. Remember what? Do you guys remember what I said before? I don't believe in any perfection. Ideology is boring. I just mean the kind of you know where you can be. At, um, and the kind of marriage you can be in and you can come alive, the kind of friendship that will make you come alive, be your best at all times, that will not make you compromise, that will not make you to, you know, to have to be sneaky. The, mm. Who can you be with? And you don't have to be sneaky. You don't have to be, to walk on eggshells. You don't have to pretend like something was not happening when it was happening. Just that person that will make you steal your life, but even better. Instead, bully you into becoming greater. Not into becoming and that's what like. So if you get to know yourself at that level, it's easy for you to know when a guy who comes in to ask you out for a lady, you, you, you are able to pick, oh, does this person fit in? Just like a microsecond of, you know, of, of knowing whether it's even pally, the way we guys are talking. For me, that's basic. Maybe people call it, maybe they call it chemistry or whatever. But whatever, you have to understand yourself at that level. And for a man, it is that picture of how the kind of life you want. And it's not being unrealistic. You know who you are. You know the kind of life you want to build and the kind of family you want to build. It is that thing that will even form proposal. If at all you're already in friendship with a lady that you, you, you now feel, oh, this one is one I think I want to double down on. Right? So it is, and that is what informs your proposal. What, 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 wait, when we say mm, he proposed to me, what are we saying? If you're proposing to her about the future you see, the two of you can build together because you've seen that you guys have common goals. And it doesn't mean that you have to work in the same place or have the same ideology or, or be passionate about the same things. It just means that your worldview, the way you perceive like your value system, the things you know you value, if you're a family-centric person, for instance, you like to be home by 6 p.m. as a man, and you feel that there's you don't have any business being outside, you just you 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 know you you, you are just that gardener, you like to keep home. You can't you you can't be fascinated by somebody who likes to stay out all night and the earliest she's back is eleven. It just won't tally, and it's not because the person is bad, but you know what I mean. So it's 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 that level of understanding. Then it is what will make you to feel first of all free. You can't be dating somebody that you are always at your best. You are always trying to impress. You are always trying to speak a certain way, do a certain thing to win them. After you win them, and then the marriage happens, then what next? You know, so those are the key questions that I usually ask. And I say, if one comes to the place where, first of all, you love yourself enough to be honest with yourself, and that doesn't mean don't develop yourself, just come as you are. Everybody will like you. If she don't like you, you should move. It means that you're developing yourself for yourself. And because you know where you're going to, you have what is driving you. And, you know, sadly, people come from different backgrounds. There are, you know, there are people that by, because of what they've been through, either from childhood or, you know, whatever. They, are, they can't be in this mind frame where they can even say, let me top up on myself. Let me become a better version of, my, of themselves. Because mentally, 
somehow they are already damaged in that sense. Sadly, there are people like that in society and they are moving around in suits and everything. I'm not talking about those people. I'm not talking about people who are sane, who think that, oh, I'm up, I'm up only mobile. I know what to do. I want the best life. You have to have that sit back to say, realistically, this thing that you know, everybody's pursuing, it, the one that says really need it. You know, because that whole thing, it's, it's usually, see, people think that peer pressure is for teenagers. It is, it's adults even have more peer pressure than ever. I mean, I've seen, I mean, for instance, adults put their children in schools that they can't afford, you know, just because their friends and the Joneses also have their children there. The pressure, and those things continue all through life. Who are we trying yeah. to impress? So what is the major thing? What is the essence of life? If we don't get to that level, for me, I used to tell people, that there's no there's no need to get married. Marriage is, is sacred. It's something that is out of your person. It's something that you have decided that in my lifetime, I want to do something spectacular. I want to expand who I am, you know, have some meaning me, if God blesses me, bring somebody else into my destiny. And then my bloodline and her own now will not be told in history forever together. Do you know what it means? You, you don't get into it with, you know, with boyfriend mentality, with, oh, and all of those cuffs and hips and tips and all that. So usually that's what I ask the young man. First of all, first of all, nobody has a gun on your head saying, you know, if you don't bring a babe, even when they, or even when those aunties and the village people are asking you, you should be, you should know yourself enough to know when it's in, when you need to have conversation with singling out a woman to say, let's be exclusive for any reason. Because this world is too big. Have you traveled the world? Have you seen people? Have you gathered all the knowledge? Have you followed your passion? Have you tried something and failed? H how many times have you tried and failed? That now it will tell you who you are. You can never, some people are also married at their level because they are afraid. They might at their level. Then the person is like them. All of a sudden they step up or the person steps up and then wahala in marriage because this person is now always going, always moving, always talking about big projects. Me, I'm here. The one person becomes um, resentful. For what reason? Communication can do this, and communication is not, I keep saying, it's not just meeting. It's not you telling me what you think I should do. It is you sharing your fears, the way you're going. Maybe I should go back and get another master's degree so that we can be talking at the same level. Maybe we should do this. Maybe we should relocate. Maybe we should go back to the village. Maybe we should. It has to be together. So that thing that, you know, and, and this type of relationship is everywhere. You know, but because my core is majorly because I love love and dating and marriage, you know, let's just keep it within this confine. But because, like you said in the beginning, every relationship is, you know, must give value. It's transactional. As long as, when people say it, they think it's about uh, maybe hookups and the rest. See, I know people that they used to be my friends before, before. I don't call them year in, year out. I don't even remember because they're no longer in my immediate purview, you know, in that sense, because... <laughs> If I can, if I can, if I live for one year and I haven't had need to ask for the advice or chip in or say, that means, you know, somehow we are growing apart and it's fine. It's fine. But no forcing mm -hmm. things, you know, everybody trying to force somebody to do something when they themselves, their lives are leaking, you know, in that sense. So especially for men, we need to get off this traditional, I wrote in my book, the modern gentleman is a different species of man. It's not the man that, you know, when we hear gentleman, we say, oh, he's a man that's well-mannered, you know, knows how to treat a lady. It's beyond that. First of all, a modern, a modern gentleman must love himself. And he can have you realize that most men don't go to the hospital. They don't. I know you shared one day about how you went to do your blood works and rest. I'm like, I come up be from another planet. Most men don't go to hospital just because I want to check on myself. You know, I just want to do a checkup. Talk by themselves. Most times, when a man is wheeled into, is wheeled into a hospital, most times he's wheeled in for himself. It's an emergency. Yeah. Why? Sure. That level of sure. lack of... See, I can't even commit my life in a marriage with a man who doesn't love himself. You don't love yourself enough to care. You're having a headache. You don't know you should rest. You, you don't know you should check your BP. You, you don't know that you'll be stressed out. Maybe you need a vacation. You say, let them give you the money instead. So you keep working. You don't love yourself. And until you love yourself, you don't have any business talking to somebody's daughter and carrying her along. And what, where are you leading her to? You're a leader. You know what, you know what, you know what Jenny, right? Um, there was something I wanted to talk about, which you just hopped on. And this is the beauty of this conversation. You know, mm -hmm. everything that you so far, you know, loving yourself, being able to communicate. I, for me, I think the foundation of it all is the place of authenticity. But and I have two, two 
blown away by how many people show up with their non-authentic self and then exactly. expect results and authentic outcomes. Now, exactly. authentic, authenticity, again, there's no part of a relationship that doesn't come with responsibility. And I'll say that over True. and over and over again. True. Your authenticity itself requires responsibility. Because, uh, yeah. like you said, talk about take me as I am. It is, this is <laughs> where I am. But guess what? Yeah. Honey, I've got dreams for tomorrow. Uh, these yeah, are the things exactly. that I do tomorrow. These are the opportunities exactly. that I recognize. Um, I may not have the wherewithal to utilize them or to maximize them, but I recognize them. And guess what? Maybe the person here which says, ah, really? Ah, then together we can seize it and we can maximize it. But the question is, exactly. are you even there with your authentic self? Are you That's there it. with you? That's it. You don't know. Okay. Because it goes back to the question I asked before. How can you? How can you? You know. You know. We're having a we're having a session where um, I, I think it was a, a hangout, a, um, Amy's hangout that we had last Saturday, and then uh, one of the guest speakers, Obi, said, um, you know, learn to have conversation with God, and you know, to to get direction in life, and learn to be able to have that kind of relationship where you know I I can turn to God and say, what what? I say, where am I going with this? But and then immediately she said that. I said, I know, said, but how can you how can you be released to ask a God you don't know that kind of question? How exactly. do you just and most people most people who can't talk to their spouse, forget it, they don't also know how to talk to God at that, that level. So exactly. they are fatherless at the top, and on the parallel level, they can't communicate with their partners, they are just floating. So the struggle is so much you can't penetrate it. Exactly. So why? Why well you are you are whole? Oh. Is a you are a whole human being. You are a whole human being. You, are, you should be authentic. You should be. You you are enough. Like you, you are not just a, a tiny corner of the world. You are everything. You're the reason the whole world exists. It's just a shift of mindset. So how? Why? Why are you being over? You know, you're trying to wear a mask to impress who? Somebody who can drop dead in a minute. Who? Like the same reason. The same reason I don't lie. It's not because I'm a Christian. What can you do to me now? I mean, I did this, or this is what is the situation. Then I lied to you because I'm afraid of you. Do you understand? It's just from that same mindset. Say, I am, see, just like God, there is no one like you. And you can, there can be a million and you cannot sort of, but it cannot be you. Sure. you see, eh, on the people, see, if people get to that level, eh, it changes everything. And all this each, each issue of marriage and uh, the so gender war will disappear. Just discover that why is it only you that you're this only specimen? If you don't make impact, if you don't cough and talk and make noise in this world and go, wouldn't you have failed your maker? That's number one. And you don't have to be a Christian if you're listening to me to understand this. You exactly. God made you only you. He had him. He had him bringing people every minute as we speak. As long as this conversation has been, millions of babies have been born. None is, is exactly the same with the same DNA and the same handprints. And you think you're just, um, you know, that you're, you're just down here and they're up here and they're, you know, all those looking down on yourself thing. It really gets into why people get into relationships and marriages and they are struggling. Something as beautiful as marriage, people are struggling. Every day I'm counseling. Every day I'm you know, and then you look at the problem, it's just a little, it's just a little shift of mindset. You know, what are you expecting her to do? Were you expecting her to, you know, just a little bit of mindset change here and there, which starts with yourself. Be realistic sure. to yourself. You know, be ready to yourself. And whatever you believe, I tell people, stand on what you believe ab initio. Don't try to, you know, you know, people prefer other people's opinion than their than the authentic self. That's the problem. So you want to, you know, other people to feel that you're with them. Meanwhile, you're not put asserting yourself when you're with other people. So for what reason? You have to be your own self. You have, you, you have to say, even if everybody says, for instance, God forbid, everybody is, is going towards a particular way and you don't, don't feel like it, you should be able to say, but well, this is how I feel and so this is where I stand for now until I change my mind for any reason. You know? So that level is where people need to get to. So, you know, Absolutely. when I start talking to men, I, I feel like no matter how a woman gets there, you know, which is why I focus on the men, you know, no matter how a woman gets there and the woman is married, she can never really carry along her husband. But if it's the other way around, if a man has a shift of 
you know, like an, an, an eureka moment. He can come home and say, Danny, see, 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 I think that something just struck me. And he can relate it. And see, by, by nature, a woman will absorb it, you know, shove it into her own, her own level and adjust. But it's not, this, it's not quite the same way, the other way. It's and that's not because, a, it, Jenny, right? You know, that's it's not, because, Jenny, right? That's because there's something called the yeah. love lead, right? The love the lead. And if exactly. you're, if is the head of, you know, the group in the family or the, whatever structure yeah. it is, 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 is at a point, there's nothing that you can do that can go beyond that point. What's going to happen is exactly. that there's going to be explosion, there's going to be levels exactly. of frustration, there'll be conflict, exactly. there'll be and you spend more time looking for grievance resolution rather than focusing exactly. on how exactly. and uh, you know you you know the other part that really aches me where i try to every time i'm troubleshooting for people when a when a whole man who is powerful like hey god a man is so powerful but he bundles himself into a small responsibility of i am the provider so that is my role Jeez, that is deception. Leadership is beyond money. Wait, is it, is it in this time and age where even a lot of women are out any men? How do you even want to do that competition? You have built a home that you're supposed to be one. You're there and you think about, I must keep working. So there's some men that, that, that as you're speaking, their only aim in life is to wake up every day and ensure that they out end their, their wife. And for them, that is how to retain respect. That's the lowest level of ignorance, if you ask me. Because at the end of the day, wait, at the end of the day, so that what will happen? Mm. A leader, a leader does not need to coerce, does, does not need to coerce or push or force a leader no, just, just knows what to say. A, 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 a leader is just proactive. I think that we should do this this way. I think the bills are getting higher when it comes to gas or something. We need to temper down a little on this. I need to just come up with the matching, like the matching orders without sounding like you're a lord. And put it on the table and understand why there is partnership so that your life can be easier. But a lot of men are struggling. For me, I say they are single inside marriage, struggling. You, you want to make up plans by yourself. You want to, you know, show. You don't want to tell her anything because, you know, traditionally in their head, women are like children. You don't tell them everything. You do all kinds of hangers up, hangers, like cobwebs in the brain. I'm like, geez, people are suffering. So if we can get to that level where we, you know that this person you're married to or relating to or trying to marry is not like your sister, is not like your brother. It's not like your 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 former husband. It's not like your um, your landlord's um, wife. She doesn't <laughs> exist ab initio. This is her, and this is the final edition of her. There's no you cannot say hey, that's how women behave. Then you use her your idea of how women behave to treat her. You will be in deep soup, and so many men are there and can't even come out. You know, so that ability to understand self. Then, because it's the love you have for yourself that you can relate to another person. Though. There's no, there's no magic around it. It is when you know yourself enough, package yourself enough, understand that you are enough. It doesn't matter how much is in your account first. While you're working on it, then you can, you can now, from the well of your love for yourself, share with your spouse and share an overflow of it to create a family that can become people who have been grounded by the culture that two of you has built as a family. For me, that's what an IG family is. And it doesn't mean that an IG family is perfect. It just means that they know that when it when the chips are down, home is the is where I don't get judged. Home is the best. Home is where we get safety and we are safe. You know? So for me, that's the conversation. And that's the mindset. You cannot relate with anybody. You cannot relate a marriage, a relationship when you are unsure of who you are. When you're unsure of where you're headed, when you're sure of what your value system are, some people don't even know what they are, uh, what, what, what they call it now, what their deal breakers are. What, what is it that if your spouse does this thing, oh my God, I can't take it, I, I can't continue. They don't even know up to that level, and yet they want to marry. It doesn't work like that. And for people who are single, who are just holding on, they, they've kept their, their life on hold, waiting to get married. Let me bust your bubble. Please go and enjoy life. It is where you're living. 
that you can attract a spouse in the first place. And don't just attract a, star, a, 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 a spouse who is just in your locality, in your office, in your area. You can, you're can you supposed to be an international figure, but you also get yourself low. Some people, uh, uh, you know, some people are supposed to be abroad studying for a master or something, but they don't want to go because in their head, they told them husband or wife is not abroad. So they are waiting. If it let them give, maybe by 20, 23, 24, if, if, if they see if they can find a husband, you know, if they can find before they can add to their life, they can imagine. Some people are not driving cars yet because hey, they say I will not find husband if I buy car. All kinds of things. First of all, if you come because I the, <laughs> the conversation is a lot. The things I see every day, I have had to you know deal on is a lot. But my biggest you know fulfillment is seeing where people get and say, oh, I get it now, and they can quit struggling. Mm. 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 Interested. Interested. I mean, since they told me, you. <laughs> I wish I can see all this comment. I can't have that one. My <laughs> wow, the, the comment. Uh, amazing. And, and thank you to everybody that is just, you know, chipping in a thing or two. I said they told me, they told you what? They told you that you will find out on a road. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I like about conversations like this is that, I mean, if you're, you cannot be telling people to be authentic if you can't have conversations that are real. The things that we're discussing here are, yeah. are very real things. Very real things. In fact, let me, let me share something with you guys Absolutely. to show you. You know me, right? Let me share something with you guys. Just about 20 minutes before we came before we came on air, Jenny was asking me, what, what are we even talking about? To? That, that's to show you guys uh, that, listen, where, there's no, there's no, okay, this, this is how I want you to say, this is, no, 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 no. Some of these things, I'm also just hearing that for the first time, and all of that on a perspective. And we're really just, as with every other episode of The Connect, we're really just speaking from the heart. My greatest vibe is my authenticity. Somebody write that down. Yeah. My greatest vibe is my authenticity. Every time that you do something that you're not naturally good at, because of the law of practice, you will get good at it. But every time you do yeah. something you're naturally good at, you will become great at it. And greatness is what the world requires of you. All these things that you are seeing, all these things that you are hearing, is about you showing up every day to the best of yourself. And so you're in a relationship that does not allow you to come to the place of your blooming the place of your blossoming. Mm. And then you are wondering what's going on. There are questions to ask with regards to yourself. First of all, like I said before, Jerry, is there something wrong with the relationship or is there something wrong with my understanding of what expectations should be in this relationship? Because it could be either of that, right? Yeah. Is there something wrong with the person? Or is there something wrong, first of all, before I check whether there's something wrong with the person, is there something wrong with my expectation of the person wow do you how do you have an expectation without setting what's your expectation based on what's your expectation hinged on did you, do you understand what i'm saying before you have an expectation yeah. of a person why are you having that expectation what is it that you think you know you think you understand about how that person will be able to go with you with you i mean create a new destiny line like jenny said and i like that phrase create a new destiny line with you why do you have the expectation is it because this is what anamdi your cousin told you that is happening for you <laughs> is this this is what Bernard, your your cousin in in slovakia is experiencing your ukraine wife and then you are here in Lagos, Nigeria, Nigeria, or your Nigeria, and then you are saying to yourself that this wife that you have ma you are married from, uh, 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 where Ohafia, this is how she must do because Bernard's wife in Ukraine is, <laughs> is doing. As, as you know, as we we human beings, I didn't want to get that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if look, listen, even if I had an idea about something, if you come with your authentic self and I come with my authentic self, we can look at ourselves and say, ah, I can live with this now. This is I'm not a, uh, not a, uh, <laughs> ah, is this the issue? It's not a <laughs> 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 
Bobo, what the problem is. We can we can fix this together now. We can go together. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I I come I come with spiritual spiritual miracle. <laughs> so <laughs> you look at me and what you see uh, as beholding the gods. <laughs> you are going to go there and say, ah, so your expectation is based on the wrong image that you got. So you built a strategy exactly. for your life on the wrong person. I said to somebody very close sure. to me one time, somebody very close to me one time, I, it was about to get married. Someone very close to me was about to get married. And I said, I said, I said to him, I said, you are a great person. And that girl, she's a great person. But I don't think That's for this reason that you guys are great together. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm telling you because the only thing that you cannot marry is not that it's not the devil that created hell at all. The, the devil did not even make marriage. Does not even understand what it is. That's why he tried to thwart it. He doesn't have a man. Do you understand? So many people have gotten into partnerships, relationships that they really have no business. No business. It's like it's, it's like you went and lied on your CV. They don't give you a job. <laughs> people like me, and let me tell you, people like me that I I dated people, I dated people that I even raised two within the space of eight years. I I dated two different people who I thought, oh, finally they are going to be married to me. One even did introduction, and I and we raised that company together. I didn't marry any of them. And I'm grateful I did not. <laughs> so it's not a matter of sometimes it looks like this is it. It is it. Ha! Just let it be. Let it be natural. See? And uh, it's worse for the man or woman who does not even connect to God at all, does not hear him. So when it comes to God, they say, How do you guys even used to hear God again? <laughs> don't don't you get to where you can hear him. Don't even bother with marriage because you don't understand what it means. Hey, God. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my God! Wow, this is this is this is a You know, you know, it's it's a real it's a real problem. You know, and, and the challenge is that the challenge I, I think is that look, we are getting we're going getting to a dispensation where you have a generation of really smart people um, who also don't yeah. have certain principles in green they don't have certain principles in green because the generation which is our generation um has shown considerable lack of understanding and really don't have much to handle but less for people that are very intentional about it and for me i think the greatest challenge that we have is to be able to get as many people to get on this wavelength i tell people many times yes. that i mentor for, mentor for a very selfish reason jenny for a very selfish reason and is that so that's if I get you to be able to think at a, at a level, my work is easy. My work is easy. Yeah. If I get if, sure. yeah, yeah, if there are three, if if everybody in my family is doing well, then who are we going to? Who is going to be the person that is disturbing us on the phone for Uncle Alpha, Uncle Alpha? Everybody is doing well now. <laughs> so it's special, we need to get people to to come to this level of understanding. Even whilst you are in a relationship, please just understand that function from the place of your authenticity. Yeah. Hey! Give me a tip, I salute you. Great relationship, guys. Come function from the place of authenticity. <laughs> let's let's oh my God. To recognize early enough what is and what isn't. I say whenever you learn, two things happen. You either learn what to do or what not to do. You also learn who you, who you can be with and who you can't be with. It is not a fight. Exactly. It's not a fight. And that's why when people come to you with, with faulty intent, when they don't get what they think they should get, you see nasty, then you see real color begin to appear. That's and it. we don't even have the time motivation to that too. You understand? <laughs> and and you want you, you want why but the truth of the matter, Jenny, that there's a lot of work for you to do. You see this this field that you have chosen. Of, of this call that you have zeroed on, of single men, I pray for you. I pray for you. I pray that the strength 
to be able to, you know, do this with the same energy. And I know you've been consistent for years. And I, bear, I testify to that. You know, the same energy that will not dwindle. That you will be able to do this with all the Amen. favor, all the tenacity, have the right mental strength to be able to face this. And you will, you know, with one person, one person will go back and be able to impact, you know, their own fair and their own lives because the, what you're doing right now Jenny is the, you know, how many people do you want to talk to even if you developed all that's the right system <laughs> how many people in that's this life how many billions of people exist upon the face of the earth how many young men that are misguided or do lack understanding are in the city that you're in how many people are, are in the state that you're in but guess what when you're able to do this right with one person that person leaves and connects with everybody in their own space. And then yeah. when they're able to do that right with the person in their space, that person in their space goes and connects with the people in the space. And so, and this is always my prayer, so that the people that you really touch and the people that really benefit from you will not even know your first exactly. last name, Jenny. They won't even know yeah. the of the earth. But yes, because of this thing that you have done from where you are, their lives will literally change. Because if, like I said at the beginning, relationships are the, even truly relationship is the greatest resource that God gave to humanity. Oh, it wow. means that therefore, you need to be able to understand it. Like Henry Rogers says, if you take it, fold it, know when to let it go, know what to do with it, to be able to invest in it, to be able to strategize about it, to be able to execute within it, to come to the fullness of their purpose and the fullness of their life. If that is truly the way it is, and it is truly the way it is, it means that what you are doing is literally one of the most significant things that you can ever do on earth. And clearly, you're someone that understands your assignments. So I pray for you again that this work that that God will breathe upon it as, as Pastor Good has years ago, that heaven will literally kiss the earth concerning Amen. this thing. Yes. And every waking day, every waking day of your life that your purpose and the clarity of it and the power and the satisfaction that comes from the process will never be lost in you. So that many years from now, when we review your legacy statement and look back over your years, there will be testimon testimonials and testimony to what you've been able to do in the space of your sphere of influence and the lives you've been able to impact. Because what are we if we can't create impact? I don't even have a query with the man that creates negative mm. impact. He's misguided. I am worried for the one that has no impact in life. Yeah. It means that, he, number one, he doesn't have yeah. clarity. Number two, he does not understand how to use this um, equipment. Number three, he doesn't even know he has equipment. So he has gone yeah. to a gun with a water pistol. <laughs> showed up mm -hmm. to a full Texan war with, with table knife. And he's expecting that things will happen. So this is this is the burden that we carry. And like myself, Jenny, yeah. this keeps us up at night. They keep us up mm -hmm. at night knowing that the more that you do, you realize that there's more to do. But don't stop. Don't let up. Don't let up. Yeah. Don't let up. Don't let up. Don't let up. Yeah. I want to give you a to talk about your new book. All right. I've been seeing it along online. I want to talk about your new book. Um, Adeni Yativa says, I love Jenny already. Looking for how we can collaborate to work with more men. I love the niche. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's called the Connect. So connect. It's called the Connect. So Connect. Yeah. Please, you guys, let's connect. Um, I'm Before I come to my book, I'm very huge on YouTube. Um. So if you look at if you look for me on Facebook, I'm there, but I haven't posted in the last six months because I'm just on a on a bit of a Facebook break. So I'm on YouTube almost every day, and I have over 160 videos there in the last one year. So you are you you're going to find a lot of nagging questions answered if you if you binge watch my videos there as well. Then my new book is for, of course, my constituency, single men, newlyweds, people who are, you know, who when they send me an invitation card and I, I'm not flying anywhere in the world to go attend, I'll be so happy because as I'm looking at them exchanging the vows, I know that this is it. So those men, I wrote a book called Hello Lady, the modern man's dating and relationship playbook. So it's a book that you can take along, you can download it as we speak. 
right? So I have it online. It's an ebook. It's just about 50 pages. In fact, there are pictures, so it's not even up to 50 pages. So I'm trying to say that it's something you can read on the go. And it starts from understanding and loving yourself to understanding women to, to removing all the gender biases about women that you have that are going to be truncating your happiness in relationship or are waiting to truncate it so that it can kill them. Then we get into also how to, how to communicate effectively. It's an art. You can learn it. How to communicate effect, um, ineffectively. And then also, also get to the point where we can look at other things, other ways you can care for yourself as a man. For me, that is very key. And it's, even if you're a shy guy, like the type that is like, oh my God, I know I should be talking to this girl, but man, I know girl liver. After reading this book, I want to see your comment. You will, you, you will come back and say, oh my God, I got it, right? So it's a part of the science. To, to talk, to communicate, to get what you want, you have to go for it. And for the men who have dropped the ball so many times, you know you should be talking to a particular class of women, but you're so afraid to get into that circle. This book will help you step up. See, you cannot come and be regretting life for, it's not a marriage you regret. See, marriage is too... How do I say it's too a uh, it's too much of a an institution for you to get in and regret. So you can't mm. be dating blindly. You can't be so you will discover the kind of women that generally you usually won't be talking to. At, the best thing you should be doing is helping them, you know, motivating them. Not you don't have anything intimate to, to do with them. So you can remove mm. yourself from that set so they can <laughs> see clearly. So very wow. simply, you can go get the book. Um, I don't know where I can leave the link, but I can mention it um on Stella chisomaka.sella.co slash hello lady chisomaka.sella sella is s-e-l-a-r dot co so, then slash hello do, lady who is this uh, Jenny um, as soon as this broadcast uh, we can actually type it in the comment section but as soon as okay, we're okay. done with this live go off in about yeah. two minutes you can comment section okay. and just post it the link to all and right put all your instagram handles and all of that uh youtube everything exactly. so people can also get to follow you and by the way guys uh before i i allow uh jenny to give a closing remark let me tell you two things number one uh for those of you that were here last sunday so there's a certain gentleman that has been commenting here and i was talking about him his name is adeni atiba guess what his doctor triple A that was with us because I, I he just dawned on me that some of you just saw I didn't hear Tiba you are like okay maybe just another person commented it was if that doctor triple A that was with us last Sunday doing great things and thriving in business it's amazing the second thing I want to say before I let Jenny give a closing remark is this I said to her before we came on I said that we're going to open up at seven o'clock. And then we'll close at 8, hopefully. But it gets as it gets the hot. I just looked at the time now. It is 8.37. And it is not my fault that we are still getting. <laughs> it's not my fault that we're here. Jenny is the one that has kept us all here. I'm trying to get us to close so that we can... Church has finished. Yeah, Jenny, your final words for today. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Please, before you go to bed, do, do one thing. Say, God, I commit myself to you. I believe in myself as a God that you made here because you can't be physically here. And I ask you to use me to do that thing you want me to be able to accomplish for you. Sleep with that consciousness. And whatever comes to your mind, you know, those things you call wishes or ideas, continue to, to write them down. Everything that comes into your mind that looks unique, put them down throughout the week or throughout the rest of the week and see how that comes together. This will also help those who are, you know, who are struggling about, oh, how do people hear God? How do people hear God? And it has nothing to do with anything esoteric or anything religious. I'm not religious. I used to be, but I'm no longer. So I am, you know, I, I, as I'm telling you about finding your authentic self so, so that you can begin to do things now, let me take you to a crazy level. If God tells you to leave the job you're doing now, will you be able to, or you'll be hung up on scarcity mindset? Oh, salary, what, 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 how am I going to cope? You have to get to that next level where you believe so much in yourself. You know that the world is full of abundance. God already made those things available for you before you were even made. That the okay. only thing you are missing are the things you have refused not to see and you give room to. There's so much abundance. There's so much abundance for you. Somebody needs to hear this. You have been struggling so much. There's so much abundance. Allow your mind to understand it. 
understand it. it's not motivational speaking when you hear people say it, it's, it's actually happening you know and god yeah. help everybody thank you so much thank you Absolutely. i'm happy if you come to my youtube channel drop a comment and tell me you're from au connect so that i can know you are from here and let's continue to connect thank you so much thank you au all right <laughs> Don't go yet. Yeah, don't go yet. I just felt, I felt something as you were as you were speaking, and I want to ask you to do something. And, and this is something that I've never done before on the connect. Okay. I, I just want you to, I want you, Jenny. I just want you to pray. I want you to pray for. And I'm not being gender biased, but I want you to pray for the men. I just want you to take a minute or two and just pray for the men. Pray for men in relationships, men that are are single and confused about how to go about it the ones that are in but not quite sure the ones that are in but just following a pattern with lack of understanding the ones that are married but you know are, are are up to here they're just on the borderline of you know let's if this thing does not work is as in really they're not even their mind is single yet their very existence is is in a marriage i just want you to just pray whatever way that you're led to pray for the next minute, I just want you, Jenny, to just pray uh, for the men, even as I was very clear in my spirit about having you do that. So please go ahead. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for the men on this live cast. You know us all together, one after the other. You know the longest of their hearts. Father, that man you have made that have not quite understood that first of all, he's a positive ancestor because he's going to live and give birth, and the people who is going to give birth to are going to keep giving birth from generation to generation. And he, they need to quote him back and say, thank God for my grandfather. Thank God for my great-grandfather. That man that hasn't gotten that picture of how powerful he is, Lord, give him clarity. Give them clarity. In the struggles of life, they restricted them from the struggles of Cain and the struggles of the latter Adam. Father, they restricted them from the struggle of Men, let them find ease. Let them find it from their mind level to their soul level to their physical level. Give them favor that is unprecedented. Let them remember that it's because they connected at AU Connect today and that they got this clarity. Show them in their dreams. Show them physical evidences that you are with them. Every man who is feeling alone, a lot of men are feeling alone, even in the midst of a crowd, even in the midst of family, in the midst of um, wife and, and, and whoever. They are feeling so alone. They, in fact, they have accepted that nobody can understand me. I'm just here for now until I'm no more. Father, help them to understand that they are a critical part of the earth. They are the reason the sun comes up and there's day and there's night every day, that you made it for them to be able to thrive. Mm. Let them see how big that they are in this world that you created and give them direction. Give them ease. Remove from them people who are talking negative things against them. The things that they cannot handle, keep away from them. Let them be able to hear only the things that will shape them towards victory. All this I pray and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Women shout a big amen. amen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anika. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your heart with us, sharing your time with us. And just, you know, connecting with us again. It's always a pleasure to have you. And I, I, I want to let you know that we will have you back again and again and again and again. With all so pleasure. Just, With all pleasure. Every quarter, just have the connect somewhere in your calendar. Flexi. <laughs> where we really Don't need problem. To just have it somewhere. It Thank will you. be my honor. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for joining us, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us. To all my friends, all the people in the Connect family, thank you so much. We have, we know that this was truly an amazing episode. As I said to someone uh, very dear to me today, I said that, look, I have a feeling this is going to be an amazing episode. And truly, of a truth, this episode was everything amazing. All right. So we're going to be back next Sunday at exactly 7 o'clock where we have the Thrive um, series continuing with the personal development conversation. My guest next Sunday is the Steel Dapper, Sheom David Onamusi, and who will be joining us all the way from the United Kingdom, even as we have an amazing conversation on personal development and growth. Remember, the last Sunday of the month, we will be focusing on spiritual issues and the soul. Uh, guess who my guest will be then? I'll be unveiling that very soon. And hey, as you go into your week, ensure that you make this a week of week, a week of weeks rather, and that by everything that you do, you will continue to give glory to the one that created you. Awesome time I've had today. Until we meet again next Sunday, 
let's keep on connecting. Good night, everyone. God bless you and have a great time. Bye.